Hello, I'm Johnny Hazel, and today we're going to review the Bill Star program. So, I've done quite a few variants. You might want to check all these variant videos out. You can find them in the description box below. So, the first thing we're going to do is have a look at the introduction overview page. So I will not spend too much time on this because a lot of it is self-explanatory. So the program for Bill Star is in general a three-day routine, okay? And you have a heavy, light, and medium day. The intensity is determined by three things. Firstly, the percentage of the five rep max, the percentage you lift. Um, so on the heavy day, you will ramp up normally to a five rep max, or uh, it's 80% of that top set on Monday or 90% on that top set on Monday. Um, alternatively, it could be down to the egg size you use. For example, a behind the neck press is used on a light day, uh, a bench is on a heavy day, and a strict overhead press is on a medium day. It could also be as a result of the rep scheme that you use. For example, five sets of three is a great light day rep scheme. Um, five sets of five is good for a heavy day, as with five sets of 10, which is not in there right now. Let's just put that in because uh, it's it's brutal that's why I'm, I'm leaving it out um, the weekly increment now that is basically how much weight you add to the bar for your top set on Monday each week um, throughout the duration of the program and remember this is a linear program and by that I mean the progression is determined by the weight added to the bar each week and it's a fixed amount um, it's not designed in a block or mesocycle microcycle macro cycle it's it's a very basic linear style training program here are some notes you can read those yourself they're pretty self-explanatory here are some exercise tutorial videos um, if you do not know how to do any of these exercises i highly advise that you watch the videos first for example the shrugs are not your traditional barbell uh, bodybuilding style shrugs these are slightly different you want to watch that video if you don't know what I'm talking about um, also the behind the neck press is an exercise you need to make sure you have the technique right I do not buy into the mass hysteria that it's a dangerous exercise is absolutely fundamentally not it's only dangerous because 90% of the people out there are complete idiots and they don't look into the exercise first and learn how to do it so they just assume you you merely just do the opposite of a front press, which is like a strict overhead press, and they give it a go, and they end up injuring themselves because they didn't apply any technique to it. So this is taken directly from the Stronger Shall Survive 1976 Bill Star book, and it explains why he omits the deadlift. The, must, the, the thing I must say about this program is it is not designed for a power lifter or an Olympic lifter or a weight lifter at all. Okay, this program was designed for college and high school football players and American football players. Okay, so it wasn't designed for weightlifters. So, from Bill Starr's perspective, the deadlift is a high risk exercise. There's a lot of dangers with the exercise. Most injuries are as a result of the deadlift. So, he strongly believes that there are alternatives out there that are less dangerous, like the power cleans, the high pulls, the shrugs. The snatches these exercises from Olympic lifting that are more beneficial and less risky than the deadlift okay and he strongly believes in that to the point that you will never find a deadlift in a true Bill Star program he just doesn't program it it's not in there um, you must remember as well this program was written for athletes okay they're not powerlifters they don't have to worry about being proficient at the deadlift and training the deadlift that's why, um, for me, the reason why I think the deadlift is one of those exercises that you can leave out or you don't need to train with great frequency is because the deadlift is highly taxing on your central nervous system. Now, that's not a bro science fact. That's 100% that's the truth. You know, since I was diagnosed, I had COVID um, and recovered since that. I had some pretty bad um, long COVID syndrome and uh, that affected my central nervous system and every time I deadlifted I spent the next 14 days basically comatosed in a state of constant fatigue um, so I can tell you straight up that the deadlift is incredibly taxing on the central nervous system maybe not for everyone but definitely for most people so uh, it is definitely an exercise you want to be careful of um, and it isn't necessarily something you 100% need to program there are other 
pulling exercises, compound pulling exercises, that can provide the same strength benefits as a deadlift um, without all the risk and all the central nervous system fatigue. So anyway, there we go. That's that reason. That, that will explain that. Let's move on to the program now. So let's get started with the Advanced Bill uh, Star program, which I've created. This is obviously the Johnny Hazel variant. However, even though I have changed some elements of Bill Star's more advanced routine, um, it is still in theory very similar to the original one. And that's that's on purpose because I still believe what Bill Star wrote in the uh, Strongest Shall Survive 76 book is still very relevant and really is one of the greatest training programs and philosophies still to this day. Uh, and without it, there wouldn't be your Macau, your Texas Method, your Strong Lifts. Uh, you wouldn't have uh, Jim Wendler training programs. You wouldn't have Starting Strength, Mark Rippletoe. So many people, so many other bodybuilders that have created programs over the years. It's all based on the Bill Star philosophy. So, right, let's get started. And I'll try and keep this video quite short because this really is more for an advanced lifter. So this should be pretty common sense by now. You would have been lifting for at least three three to five years, maybe even longer. But it's good to just brief you on, on how this spreadsheet will work. So the first thing we're going to look at, put in our one rep maxes right here. This is for the squat, the bench, the strict overhead and the deadlift. Then it will automatically calculate your power clean and your front squat. If you already know this weight, you can just type over this and put it in right there. If you don't know it, then at least you've got an estimate there. Front squat's about 50% of your back squat. Power clean is about 54% of your deadlift. It will then calculate your five rep max and give you an idea of how much you're going to be lifting uh, by the end of the eight-week program and what you look to add to your uh, to your max, your five rep max by the end of the eight week program, but then that's not 100% accurate per se. That might vary a little bit, okay? This is just a rough estimation, it might be less than this. Next up, rounding 2.5 for pound uh, for kilograms, five for pounds. Please remember, we got a pounds and a kilogram spreadsheet there. The implement is how much weight you add to the bar each week for your top heavy set weight. The top heavy set weights are highlighted here in bold. For each exercise okay what you want to put as your increment is down to you for me personally with kilograms it's about 1.5 which i guess would be about two point uh, about three pounds or something maybe 3.2 pounds uh for the squat and the pull i like about five kilograms uh maybe that's a little bit less sometimes but you know you can do more for the squat and the pulling exercises because they're larger exercises um but again, you can change that. You could make it possibly as a pressing increment. You might want to do 2.5 kilograms or five pounds. Uh, you might want to do seven point. You might want to do less for the squat. You might want to do 2.5 for the squat and pull increment. Bearing in mind that you're adding this weight to the bar each week, um, so you might want to do that. Uh, whatever really works for you. Okay. My advice would just be to sense, be sensible with it. For me personally, I normally keep my pressing at about 1.5 kilograms per week because you can't add too much for pressing. And then for the squat and the pull, I'll add about 2.5 kilograms, which is about five pounds. Maybe if I'm having a good training block, this I'm feeling confident. I've had a good rest before I begin this program. I'm in a real good point in my training routine, my nutrition plan, my lifestyle is very balanced. I might whack that up a little bit to five kg which is 10 pounds but again it's down to you eight week program pretty damn good timeline there you've got three days a week good heavy day light day medium day right uh, and we are training on our heavy day the power clean bench and the back squat so first thing always warm up cardio leg raises stretching try out about five reps each week for the leg raises mr stands for max reps that means try and do as many as you can for the power cleaning, we're doing five sets of five. Top heavy set weight is our five rep max on week one, which is right here. First four sets are called ramping sets. They are a percentage of your top heavy set weight. For example, the first one is 80% of your top heavy set weight for that day. Then 85, 90, 95. Now, if you have used any of my other routines, the Bill Style Power Intermediate Beginner Powerlifting Program, then you'll ask yourself why for the kilograms are you rounding to 2.5 because before I normally said 
round all the time to five, whether it's pounds or kilograms for your ramping sets. Well, because you're now in an advanced stage, you're going to have to be a bit more specific with these ramping sets. Let's say you have a 350 pound squat PR, then that's heavy weight. You really want your ramping sets to be very accurate and controlled. You don't want to jump it too much. So let's say if it's you know, meant to be 136 and it rounds out to 140, that's a big jump when you're talking about large numbers, for example. So you want that to be a bit more specific on the advanced program. So the bench press, we're doing three sets, five, three sets, three, one set, of eight, to 10. The, the max for this week is actually a set of three. We know that because it's there. Right, the reason why it sets a three, because for the second set of three and the third set of three, we're adding the incremented weight right here to the bar. So the weight gets heavier for each set of three. So we really have to do sets of three. We can't really do that if it's sets of five because we're adding a lot of weight to the bar. And fit. Well, not a lot, but we're adding weight to the bar. So you're going to find yourself burn out, get fatigued by probably set two if these were sets of five rather than three. Then to make up for any loss of volume, we do one back off set using the weight that we use for the set number three. Right, simple as that. Back squat, five sets, ten. Pretty brutal. Prepare yourself mentally. How do we choose the weight for the top heavy set? It is 70% of our one rep max back squat. The first four sets, as always, are ramping sets. 80%, 85, 90, 95% of the top heavy set weight. Simple as. Now, we uh, create a linear uh, a linear growth each week. There's a very sort of strict linear periodization concept applied to this training program. You just add the implement each week for the top heavy set as you can see here we've added 1.5 from the previous week same applies for week three we've added 1.5 from the previous week that runs all the way to the last week so but for the last week the very last week for the top heavy set i'd like you to do a set of five rather than a set of three just to test that you've increased your one rep max uh, your five rep max, sorry, for this program. You can really tell how it's grown from week one when in theory your your PR for the bench was 135 as a five rep max and it's now 145.5. So that's a pretty good indication that there's been some strength gains made during this eight week process. There we go, simple as that. Then we do two hypotrophy exercises, the leg extensions, the leg curls, three sets of 20 at about five kilograms 10 pounds each week uh, to create that sort of linear growth uh, keep with the trend of our compound exercises as well moving on light day so now we start with the light day now by, by no means is this necessarily a light day but it is lighter than let's say day one the heavy day so we start with our warm-up routine same as before the only variation now is we're doing sit-ups instead of leg raises uh, first thing we're going to do is the power cleans, and that is 80%, 80% of Monday's top heavy set weight, which is C24 right there. That's how we use that, okay? That's your top heavy set. As you can see, the top heavy sets are always highlighted in bold. Then we got four ramping sets at 80, 85, 90, 95% of our top heavy set weight for that day. And the same principle applies, uh, I would, uh, no, every week we make some sort of linear progression based on uh, the new weight that we have on Monday's top heavy set. So uh, obviously it's all, you don't actually do add the increment here. This remains the, the variation, the, the change in the weight each week is based on the top heavy set weight on Monday. So as you can see, uh, that formula remains consistent for each week. Uh, it's 80% of what we did the day on Monday or Tuesday, day one, top heavy set weight. There we go, that's quite simple. Uh, next up is the behind the neck press. This is a, I say 70% of your five rep max for your strict overhead press. And that, that will give you pretty much nearly spot on the amount of weight you could do for behind the neck press. Um, if you have never done this exercise, just be careful with this weight. Um, if you want to be more conservative, you can always change that to 55, 60, 65%, uh, something that's more representative of what you know you can do 100% up to you. Now we have the same rep scheme that we had for the bench press, three sets of five, three sets of three, one back off set of eight to 10 reps. 
It's the exact same as there. Okay, the but the top heavy set weight is highlighted in bold right here. The first three sets of five are ramping sets, 85, 90, 95% of that top heavy set weight. And then for the second and third set of three, we add the increment weight of 1.5 kilograms for each of those sets. And then we finish with a back off set, which is the weight we did for the third set or the final set of five reps that session and that is the weight we do for eight to ten reps quite simple and the linear progression is achieved by adding the incremented weight each week for these top heavy sets same principle as the bench press on the final week for that top heavy set weight do a set of five instead of set three and then, then you can do the second and third set for three and if you're feeling a bit fatty you can always skip this back off set Front squats is a great light day exercise because it's nowhere near the amount that you can do for your back squat. I've never met anyone who can out front squat their back squat, so it's a cool exercise. We're going to do five sets of three and one back off set. If you can do a back off set, if you can't, skip this. Uh, now, the weight we already know because that's up here, right here. Okay, I'm going to do five sets of three. The first four sets are ramping sets, and then you do the top heavy set and then one back off set. And the same as applied rule applied for the squats you add the implement of 2.5 kilograms in this instance each week for the top heavy set weight as you can see we're doing b13 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 there we go all right uh, and but for the final session do a set of five instead of set of three so you can test your new five rep max then you're going to do two hypertrophy based exercises weighted hyper extensions for three sets of 15 and toe raises or uh, they're most commonly known as standing calf raises. Uh, I, I don't know, you know what? I never know really how people spell this. I, I spell it V-E. How do you spell it? That would be interesting. Uh, and then do three sets of 30. Try and add about, I don't know, 5 to kilograms, 10 pounds a week. Or 2.5 kilograms, 5 pounds a week. Based on what you know you can do. There we go. So that is day two covered. Now day three is the medium day. We're going to do our warm up routine. This time we're going to do leg raises um, for the same amount of reps you did on day one, uh, and then get going with the workout. You could do high pulls, strict overhead press, and back squats. My favorite being the high pull. I love the high pull exercise. So we already we're going to work out what is our high pull max. Now what I do for my high pull is I do 90% of my power clean five rep max. That's pretty damn representative of what I can do for a high pull uh, comfortably. So that's how I calculate that top heavy set weight. All right, so that's our top heavy set right there. The third set is the top heavy set. The first two are like considered to be ramping sets, 70%, 80%, then we hit that top heavy set and then we've got two more sets of five after that, where what I do is I apply the same rule of thumb as I did for the pressing exercises, where for the second set of three, the third set of three, we just increase the weight each time. We do the same thing for the high pull. We add uh, weight each time um, by however much you put there. So in this case, 2.5, so it's 7.5, final one, 10. I like this training principle for the high pull okay and this is kind of something that bill star recommended um not necessarily in the exact same way that i've done it here but this way i think is really good and really effective so for the strict overhead press same rep scheme as we did for the behind the neck press and the bench press three sets five three sets three one back off set okay and same as before the top heavy set is right here highlighted in bold okay we know our strict overhead five rep max for week one because it's right there and then the second set of three the third set of three you just add whatever your pressing increment is each time and then you do your back off set which is the same way as set three now same rule applies on the final week for that back for that top heavy set weight highlighted in bold don't do three do five so you can really test how your five rep max has grown from when you started the program to when you finish the program and then we finish with the back squats we do five sets of five and one back off set if you have the energy to do so uh, the top heavy set weight is our five rep max which is highlighted up here for week one and then each week after that you just add whatever your uh, squat in increment weight is as you can see in this case it is 2.5 kilograms that's why it's gone from 182.5 to 185 
and then you do your back off set the first sets are all ramping sets leading up to that top heavy set and then you do your leg extension and leg curls use the same weight as you did on day one don't add any weight you just add weight for the next week's session on monday or tuesday day one basically the heavy day there we go that is the program in a nutshell so if you have any questions comment below in the youtube section contact me on instagram you can download this program directly from my website in this excel spreadsheet format and you can also subscribe to the channel turn on notifications keep up to date with all my program reviews and thank you for watching this stay tuned for more i'm going to try and do at least one new program review each week that's my target so it's definitely worth clicking that subscribe button if you haven't seen any of my other tutorial videos for these programs right here these sheets i will have the link in the description where you could just go from there and find it so thanks for watching have a fantastic day good luck with the program